I'm Dr. Jerry Hash, a physical therapist from the Hash Institute in Aurora, Colorado. And I call this a new pubic joint mobility dysfunction. And I name it that, I've been aware of this for over 20 years, but it's not in the literature. The physical therapy uh, body of work on the sacroiliac and pubic joint was derived from the osteopathic muscle energy model and that model, the biomechanical model, was fully articulated in 1958 by Fred Mitchell Sr. And they describe an anterior rotation at the pubic joint in which the pubic tubercle, our example is on the left, is forward. And I have never seen that pattern because I palpate the entire length of the pubic bone. So I separate it into an upper third, a middle third, and a lower third. And I make sure I'm on, I'm on bone and that I allow about a four millimeter gap uh, between, my, between my fingers. And what I have found consistently is when it looks like it's rotated, um, I'm, I'm going to use the example, when, like it's rotated actually on the right, in which the right is anterior. When you walk down again, it's, it's anterior along the entire length. So it is a posterior glide on the left. And I'll tell you why it's on the left in a little while. And you'll find there's a step down when you palpate across the fibrocartilage from the upper third, middle third, and lower third. And with that shift, of course there is movement happening inside the SI joint because the whole hemipelvis is connected, connecting the pube with the sacroiliac joint. And the ischium is right behind the pube. It's, it's below and, and posterior to the pube, and of course those bones are fused. So when, when the pube glides posteriorly, then this ischium also glides posteriorly. And so what you'll find is that when the patient is prone, uh, because of this glide at the pub initium, the sacrospinous ligament will be very, very tight. It won't have a, it won't have the normal spring yield, slight, slight mobility to that ligament. It feels very, very tight. The other thing you'll find is that the ischium is, of course, posterior, and the ischium is fairly flat. So there's a generous amount of of, of territory here where you can palpate and compare sides, and when you try and spring the ischium forward, you'll, you will not be able to take up the slack using 15 pounds of force. And you can add another 15 pounds of force and you're still not taking up the slack, so you're not able to spring it. There's no forward spring and of course no recoil. Whereas if you come to the other side, you can certainly take up the slack and you can spring it and there's a normal small amount of movement and also a recoil. So this pattern is named posterior glide of the left pubic bone and treatment is fairly straightforward. For severe cases you would end up using a pelvic support worn down low at the level of the trochanters because that has been shown by two different researchers to impart 40% greater compression than when it's worn up high. And when it's worn up high uh, it's not really compressing the pubic joint along its entire length. When it's worn down low, it's worn at the level of the pubic joint and, and same, same as the trochanters. And of course, strengthening makes perfect sense. However, most of the time, the pubic joint, the pubic compression belt is not necessary. And um, oftentimes you can achieve a very dramatic response very, very quickly. It's still worthwhile to teach core strengthening, uh, especially pelvic floor squeezing, which is automatic with certain, with certain exercises. And so what I thought I would do is have my client describe her response to a one-time treatment. And this is the third day of her whole body treatment. Um, and I will have her describe how she felt before treating the pubic joint and how she felt afterwards. And this is Cassandra. Hi. Um, I had a lot of
pain, I would get to where I could hardly walk. Um, and was also um, experiencing um, bladder leakage and then it progressed for the last few weeks into bladder gushing. <laughs> and um, I, my body also felt like um, the whole right side was twisted is what I ended up finding out. But um, I just, I felt discombobulated. I had to walk kind of like a duck or waddle just because I was not, um, um, I don't know, I just so sore. My body was just really sore. And after the treatment, um, I immediately felt like my skeleton was actually holding up my whole body. And um, I was walking with no pain. I could walk with my legs straight. And I felt like kind of I was like together again. And I could feel that my core was engaged naturally. Um, I was oh, sore that evening. And that was just because... Um, that whole right side of my back um, did a release and I felt um, like I can actually move. <laughs> um, I'm not having, I'm not experiencing any bladder leakage anymore and I haven't had gushing. <laughs> so I'm just protected just in case, but um, I, I haven't had any since. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm just excited about everything that Dr. Heiss has done for me and um, I'm looking forward to being able to ride my horse. Uh, also, my legs in the past were, they had gotten really weak, um, and there was a, a knot of muscles above my knee, and, and I, I couldn't even get up steps, like anything higher than a regular step. And um, now I'm able to hold my leg up on my own, where before I couldn't do that. I had to use my hand, and then that was really difficult. So um, I just feel like I'm a whole body again as far as connected and I'm really excited to go forward and live my life. <laughs> Thank you. And I would add that we certainly need more research on this pattern and there's no research on the upper pubic rotation that doesn't exist. There's wow. no research out there on that. Wow. Um, but we certainly need research but in the interim uh, I would encourage clinicians to palpate the entire length of the pubic bone palpate across the upper, middle, and lower third, uh, push on the, on the sacrospinous ligament on both sides, and do that posterior to anterior spring test on each ischium. And the treatment is so simple uh, to get that to glide back anteriorly. I take a piece of two inch by four inch by eight inch foam, and I place it underneath that ischium, and the client lies with their legs straight for five minutes. You know that. Uh, yes. I would, the one thing I forgot to mention was I was having um, severe um, lumbar pain and severe SI joint pain, and it went it radiated down to my tailbone where I could hardly, well, couldn't sit at times. I couldn't sit. I the only relief I could get was like ly lying down flat. That's the only position that I could be in. And um, they wanted to do um, surgery eventually on me and. Um, I've had SI joint um, injections, I've had epidurals, I've had tra transforaminal epidurals, that was the only thing that was giving me relief, <laughs> and then it started to get shorter and shorter, and I'm only allowed three of those a, a year, and I, by this October, I was asking for another one, and it was too soon, I had to, I was going to have to wait till January, now I'm not going to have one, because <laughs> <laughs> I feel great, I mean, it's, it's cured. <laughs> um, it, I feel like the whole the whole system's working, and but that was my like one of the severest things was that that tailbone pain, um, and and just and it at times when after the shot would wear off, and as I continue to walk, it got it get to where I was less and less able to move, and to where I would have to like it took me an hour to go feed our horses that you know I would just have to walk really really slow, very short um, uh, pace or the the length of my step yes. really sh had to be really short because of the pain. So yeah. Very good. Yeah. And I would add uh, one last comment is that most clients need only a one-time treatment and the body somehow likes that new position and the body keeps it. Great. <laughs> um, so it's a very easy evaluation, a very easy treatment. Thank you very much.